is Terry Graham reporting for the Real News Network in Baltimore City, Maryland. We're outside the Mitchell Courthouse where we just received the verdict on Caesar Goodson, one of the six officers tried with the in-custody death of Freddie Gray, and one of the officers with the most serious chargers. I'm here with investigative reporter Stephen Janis. Stephen, tell me about the verdict and what kind of impact this is going to have on policing in Baltimore. Well, uh, all, Caesar Goodson was found not guilty on all counts, including depraved heart murder, one of the most serious charges brought in the entirety of the six cases. So this is an extremely like watershed event in terms of prosecuting police officers. I mean, this case was the case where most believe that Marilyn Mosby and the prosecution had their best chance of reaching conviction. But more importantly, the fact that he was found not guilty of, say, misconduct in office, he was found not guilty of second degree assault, all those things taken within the spectrum of evidence that we saw means that I would think that anybody who wants to prosecute a police officer would have to think more than once about it. I mean, we, we sat through the closing arguments. Uh, it hewed very, the closing arguments by the prosecution hewed to the law. Um, you know, show that they made six stops, one of them secret stops, where he, where Caesar Goodson didn't call in, just went in the back of the van and looked to see what Freddie Gray was doing. So we had a sort of a continuum of activity where they refused to provide medical attention to Freddie Gray or anybody, uh, Freddie Gray during the entire one hour. And duration. a continuum of activity where officers have disobeyed general orders. When right. an officer makes a stop, isn't he obligated to call that in? Yes, absolutely. In fact, in that secret stop, uh, one of the points that the prosecution made is it puts him in danger. He's supposed to call for backup. You actually put yourself in danger stopping a van and getting out. So really what this case, I think, reveals at this point is this going to be almost very, very difficult for anybody to prosecute police. Very, very difficult for anybody to prosecute police or do anything um, to try to hold police accountable. Uh, you know, they even said in the trial, we, we ignore our general orders. So in a sense, even though this case hewed, and the prosecution's case seemed to hew very closely to the law, it's very difficult to understand where the law uh, fit in with this, because given what was decided. Looking at the evidence that was presented, what evidence do you think had the greatest impact on the outcome of this trial? Well, given that, uh, you know, all of the charges, you know, where he was acquitted, I would say the most, what, what must have been, I think, persuasive with the judge was a couple things. Number one, that Freddie Gray was combative, you know, and the ar defense made the argument that Freddie Gray was combative and therefore they could not give him any sort of help or assistance. So I think that must have been probably the most important of all the, ca of all the charges brought in the case in terms of evidence. That must have been the most important. The second thing that I think would be actually like very important was the idea that the officers uh, were not clear on Freddie Gray's condition or had no obligation. I can only imagine that it must have been in the judge's mind that the officers had no obligation to check on Freddie Gray. You know, they noted that they stopped six times, they went inside the van, they never really looked at his face, looked at his condition. So the judge must have concluded that they either had fear or really no general obligation, or for some reason they were excluded from the rules that say they have to fasten him in. I mean, really, at this point, general orders, which is a police book, that sort of tells police how they're supposed to operate is not relevant in cases like this because it doesn't have any effect upon how the law views it. So isn't this saying that if a prisoner shows any form of resistance or even is combative, does this mean that he has the police officers have no obligation to keep him safe? That would be exactly what you would conclude from this. That literally Baltimore police have no obligation if a police, if a if a suspect at any point in, during their arrest shows um, any amount of combativeness or any sort of you know resistance in arrest then whatever happens to him at that point or her it's on them I mean the police have no legal obligation I think this sets a very dangerous precedent for the policing process in Baltimore. I'm here with Juan de Jones, whose brother is Tyrone West. He died in police custody, and I know you've been monitoring this trial because you wanted to see whether or not police officers would be held accountable for the death of a young man. And you heard the verdict today. How did that make you feel? Heartbroken. I'm, I'm so disgusted. And it's sad that I'm more disgusted that this is what everybody expected. Like, 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 that's just disgusting to me. So are you going to continue your West Wednesdays? Absolutely. I'm going to always continue, and I'm going to continue on being positive. Because at the end of the day, I don't ever want the victims of police brutality to be lost because of negativity. So I'm going to continue on being positive, praying that things, I'm praying for, I'm hopeful that things will soon change. Well, I know you've been a really positive influence for a peaceful protest in Baltimore City, and I'm sure people are really glad to hear that you're going to continue with your West Wednesdays. Now, now that you've seen that verdict, do you have any hope that the other officers will be convicted on any charge? 
gorgeous? Not at all. Not at all. I'm outraged by this. All six of these cases of these cops involved in the death of Freddie Gray, these were cases about the murder of a young black man. A young black man who was perfectly healthy, doing nothing wrong, and then when the cops got through with him, he had suffered fatal injuries. But the authorities, the, the legal system is finding no criminal violations by any of the cops involved in this. They've tried an arresting officer, they've tried the van driver, both of them were acquitted, and then they tried one of the other officers. He got off on a mistrial. And what they are saying to us is that our police can brutalize and even kill you and they will not be punished in any way. Now, do you think this means that our criminal justice system can't be used to hold police officers accountable? Well, it clearly isn't being used to hold police officers accountable. And that, that seems to be the point when you look at these cases. I've been in the Gilmore Homes a number of times the past couple weeks. I've met a number of people who witnessed the arrest of Freddie Gray. And all of them say, yeah, the police know I witnessed the arrest of Freddie Gray. No one has come to interview me to ask me to testify. So in other words, we don't want that in this case. We want something else in this case. And the something else is they felt they had to charge these cops because people stood up, rebelled. But then a year later, they feel like we can get away with exonerating these cops. So the intent was to cool people out with indictments and then to push into people's faces exonerating these killer cops and expecting that people would accept it. And this is a message that black people have no rights that this system's police are bound to respect. And I am purposely drawing from the Dred Scott decision of 1857 because this is a modern day Dred Scott decision in a case that is in effect a modern day lynching because it used to be mobs of racist whites who killed black people and got away with it. Now we got gangs of police who murder black people and get away with it. Nothing has changed. That is why I'm a revolutionary, a big part of it. There are other horrors too that I'm working to end, but this is a big part of why I'm a revolutionary and why we in the Revolutionary Communist Party are organizing for an actual revolution at the soonest possible time. And a crucial part of that is standing together with people against outrages well, like this. Well, that's what I wanted to ask you. What kind of reaction do you want to see from Baltimore City residents now that this verdict has been rendered? I want people to take some of the anger that they displayed when I went among the Gilmore homes and not go from being angry but being resigned to the system is going to let them go and there's nothing we can do. People need to see that we cannot accept this. No one should accept this. Black people especially shouldn't accept it because they're saying we can do anything to you, our cops can do anything to you, and they'll get off. This is Taya Graham for the Real News Network here in Baltimore City, Maryland.